Yeah, hello everyone. So I'm Ron Hui Gu. I'm now an assistant professor at Columbia University uh, in computer science department. And I did my PhD at uh, Yale University and did my undergrad at Tsinghua University in China. And uh, I'm also the co-founder of this uh, 30K project. And uh, this is a startup that's aiming to build the trustworthy smart contracts and blockchain ecosystems. So we all know that blockchain is really, really hot, right? So it's almost the keyword of the year 2017. And uh, uh, during the last year, the market cap of, of all virtual cryptocurrencies has been in increased uh, 20, uh, 20 times, right? And reached the $300 billion. And uh, the number of Ethereum smart contracts have, uh, have been increased by 10 times and reached this, uh, the total amount of 1 million uh, smart contracts. And uh, many people think that the value of these cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoins, uh, Ethers, and so on, are based upon trust. And uh, some people even call it a belief rather than a trust. But uh, however, the implementation or the code of these blockchains and smart contracts are not trustworthy. Uh, so first, first of all, the implementations are error prone. Uh, so because those codes are written by average software engineers, right? And uh, they just take it as a, a nine to five job and uh, they can make mistakes. And according to one study done by Google, that's the top software, software engineers in this world will make about one bug or one error in every thousand lines of code. But uh, we know that there are one million smart contracts there, so you can imagine how many bugs are there. And they are controlling kind of like a, a few hundred billion US dollars. So, so that's why Charlie Lee, the, crea the creator of Litecoin, called it the paradise of hackers. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, another reason that is a, is a paradise for hackers is that the smart contracts are open sourced, meaning that it's totally uh, transparent to, to attackers. And they are immutable once deployed, meaning that, well, it's not that easy to fix bugs. Even uh, these bugs are uh, de detected. Uh, so uh, we really want that these smart contracts or this code can, be, uh, can uh, free of bugs before uploading to the blockchain. And another thing is the huge attack benefits. Uh, so thanks Daniel that he already mentioned a few stories about this financial loss caused by hackers, right? We know that the DAO uh, attack, right? One bug uh, caused about uh, 15 million dollars uh, financial loss. And uh, the BC, this beauty chain, right? This also one bug caused about more than five billion dollars scam. Uh, so we know that there's kind of like uh, this, uh, uh, this kind of like uh, events and uh, uh, events showing that there is really a big demand for this uh, protection for smart contracts and blockchain ecosystems. And, and uh, are there any ways that we can achieve that goal? So I just list a few technologies that are widely used. And uh, the X axis are the reliability, means how much we can help for uh, uh, protecting this, the, this code. And the Y axis is the feasibility, means how easy it is to deploy such uh, uh, technologies. And this, uh, on the left bottom uh, corner is the human review, or nowadays what they call the smart contract auditing. It's basically upon some so-called experts to read your source code and trying to figure out the bugs in your code, which of course is not that reliable and also not that scalable, right? Uh, as far as I know, some auditing companies, now they have a, a, a really long line waiting for their services, but they can't handle because the experts are really uh, limited. And uh, we also have test, which is widely used in the industry. It's very easy to deploy, but uh, the guarantee it can provide is, uh, is, is pretty weak. And we also have this runtime monitor. Uh, this is pretty hard to deploy on the blockchain, 
uh, ecosystem because it will burn gas. Uh, and also we have this partial verification, meaning that it will try to check that whether your smart contracts can satisfy a list of properties or not. This list of properties might include the integer overflow, buffer overflow, and so on, uh, which is helpful, but also uh, not enough. So on this top right corner is our Certic technology, with, which utilizes this what we call the fully formal verification. So formal verification, many people are talking about formal verification, uh, including Vitalik, the creator of uh, Ethereum, and also including Professor Shoucheng Zhang, right? They, uh, they said that, well, this is a big thing in the blockchain uh, community. But not that many people understand what is the formal verification. Basically, you can view it as a, mass, a mathematical pr uh, approach or a mathematical technology trying to prove that the implementation indeed satisfy your specification, satisfy your, your, your design. And uh, uh, the, t the uh, new technique we introduced is called a deep spec. Basically, it's a way to, uh, uh, to decompose uh, very uh, complex smart contract or blockchain system into uh, a bunch of layers and then make this proofs uh, much easier and make it uh, scalable. And uh, it can be done almost uh, automatically and uh, can produce this machine checkable proofs, meaning that you don't need to trust my proof. You can check the proof by yourself using your own laptop. And this is the development of our technology. So in 2015, we introduced this deep spec uh, concept by me and uh, Professor Zhong Shao, who is the chair of the uh, computer science department at Yale University. And uh, in 2016, this concept was widely accepted and studied by a broader community, including the researchers from Yale University, Princeton, MIT, and UPenn. And the two workshops and one summer school have been held uh, since then. And in 2016, we developed the Certic uh, technology and uh, built a Certic OS, the world's first fully verified OS kernel. And in 2017, we extend our Certic and can support the formal verification of blockchain and uh, uh, smart, uh, smart contracts. And uh, the, our techniques have been published in five top tier conferences. Uh, including POPO, PLDI, o and OSDI, and has been selected as the research highlights by a communication of ACM, which is uh, regarded as a great honor. And our techniques also are also widely considered as a real breakthrough. And uh, so this, uh, this is a uh, military robot is called Landshark Machine, and our Certic OS was deployed on it and was used by DARPA. You can see that we can provide a military grade protection to the system software. And uh, this is the, our interface that uh, uh, to give this military grade protection to smart contracts. And uh, uh, this is the, the BEC uh, example. So you can simply upload this uh, smart contract um, uh, using our interface and then uh, you click this upload uh, button and it will check all the bugs in your smart contract and give you counter examples if uh, some bugs are, are, are found. And we can also produce a pretty detailed uh, report about the bugs or issues found in your code. And uh, so this is uh, one case study that we just done for the bullish, which is a, a, smart, a, a smart contract co a company. And you can see that we can provide a pretty detailed uh, analysis to their code base. And uh, actually it's kind of like an interactive interface in the sense that they can click on the button to, and uh, check the, the detailed uh, information. And uh, now I will introduce our team. So definitely it's founded by me. I'm Ron Hui Gu. I'm the assist assistant professor at Columbia University. And it was also co-founded by Professor Zhong Shao, who is the chair of the CS departments uh, uh, at Ye uh, Yale University. And also we have Wilhelm, who is our research scientist. And uh, he also won the John Reynolds doctoral uh, dissertation award in 2016 which is almost the top award in our f uh, field as a uh, PhD. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Work. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't prove something, but uh, how you can guarantee bug free? Yeah, it's a good question. And it's, it's really kind of like a theoretical question. So according to Turing, so actually this formal verification 
problem is indeed undecidable in the sense that we can't even prove that any program, let's give a program, we can't even have a way to prove that whether or not this program can terminate. So it's pretty limited. But it's more like it's a, there is a red line, kind of like below that red line we can prove and above that red line we can't prove. But the thing is we don't know where that red line is. And uh, uh, s for example, for a uh, uh, concurrent OS kernel, many people previously they, they, they don't believe that a system that as complex as the OS kernel that can be formally verified. But uh, in 2016, we do it. Professor, Zhong, uh, Professor Shaw and I, we built the world's first fully verified concurrent OS kernel and demonstrate that while this technology can be applied to a system as complex as a concurrent OS kernel, we lift that red line to, uh, to the, the current state of ours. And uh, the smart contracts and the, even most of the blockchain uh, systems we believe are still below that red line. And we will show it again. Thank you. Hi, actually I'm very impressed with what you're building with the product and I'm, I'm just curious to know what is your business model? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's a good question. Yeah, the business model is pretty simple. So we, we provide formal verification services and we charge. <laughs> yeah. And the reason is, well, it has a high demand, right? Uh, so uh, there are, can I, uh, we already got a line of uh, uh, blockchain startups that want to do formal verification in our company. And that's one thing. The second thing is, as I said, compared with the so called uh, auditing or human review, our business is more scalable. So we can s accept more uh, customers. Yeah. Yeah. And also, as I said, some, for some companies, they can do the smart contract auditing, but actually, they can't help you audit or review the, let's say, the, the implementation of EVM, the implementation of the virtual machine. They can't do it, but uh, we can. Uh, after our survey costs being released, we are still the only team in this world that can help you verify a system as complex as a concurrent OS kernel. So yeah, although it has, has been released for two years. So uh, what kind of security property can you prove and do you require uh, users to um, write specs or modify their code? And also for your service, do you have to manually prove or do you automatically prove? Uh, yeah, thank you. It's a good question. So first of all, to your last question, yeah, we have this. We have this demo. You can see that it can be done automatically. You click the button, you get the results almost uh, immediately. And uh, uh, so, what's your first question again? Uh, so, what kind of property? Oh, what kind of pro yeah. security property, right? Yeah, and also, yeah. do they have to? Modify the code. Okay. Uh, so first of all, what we can prove, we can prove two kinds of properties. One is what we call reliability. The second is security. So what is the reliability? It means that while well, your code, let's say, your system will not give you a blue screen. It will now crash without any attacks. The security means that well, it can defend attacks. Uh, so uh, we can prove the reliability. That, that that's for sure. That your program is correct. Second is the security that we can prove that it can, uh, your system is immune to classes of attacks. It's not to one single attack, it's to classes of attacks. But there's some limitations in the sense that we can only protect the knowing attacks. But knowing classes of attacks mean that, for example, if they can utilize, for example, fallback mechanism to attack your, your contract, we can prove that, well, you are immune of this kind of attacks. But for the new uh, ones, we are still, uh, we can't do much, yeah. So uh, do you prove um, based on the uh, solidity source code or the EVM? Yeah, it's a good question. So our uh, technologies are not language, uh, are language independent. So we're not uh, uh, restricted to any uh, single language. You can do solidity, we can do uh, C, C++, Java, JavaScript, and whatever. But uh, the backend engine is a, a uniform uh, engine. But the front end for each language, we have to provide a single one. For the, one, for the language that we, we, we don't support at this moment, we can uh, add in a very short period of time. Is it a good time to buy cryptocurrency? Uh, well, yeah, it's, a, it's hard to, to answer. Yeah, I would say yes. <laughs>
<laughs> always a good time. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? And it's a, always a good time to all in. Yeah. Okay. Now, well, give him a big round of applause, Professor Gu. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.